بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين After Allah Azza wa Jal gave an oath in the first set of verses in Surah Al-Fajr Allah Azza wa Jal changes the speech to something different saying Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'ad Have you not considered or perceived how your Lord dealt with Ad. Now the speech here is addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It is a direct way of telling him victory is coming. The names that are going to be mentioned in different verses, this one and the following ones, are about the toughest Nations through the history who existed. So who is Quraysh? Comparing Quraysh to Ad is, Quraysh is nothing. Right? Allah is telling Muhammad, did you not or have you not perceived or considered what your Lord, your Lord? So the one that you are calling people to worship is your Lord. And since He is your Lord, He is going to support you and give you victory and protect you. What your Lord or how your Lord dealt with Ad. Now notice Allah Azza wa Jal said, Kayfa, how? Allah Azza wa Jal said, did not say what. How means something happened, but it's just telling you how it happened. Right? So, the punishment of those who deny and belie messengers is inevitable, will happen. Allah Azza wa Jal will send it down on them. Now, Ad and then the later uh, verses mentioned Thamud, these two. Uh, Names are names of, of tribes that existed at one point of, uh, of time in history, right? And their places, their residence was adjacent to the Arabs of, of Mecca, right? Near uh, Yemen, for example, uh, Ad were people who resided in the area of Al Ahqaf near Yemen, right? So during their journeys of, of trade, their caravans, they used to go past by them. So they know, right? And some of the people of the book who existed in, in, in Mecca also mentioned to them stories about Ad. Now Ad were tyrants, disobedient, uh, associated with Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning here. Now remember, we are at the last juz of the Mus'haf, right? Of the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal had mentioned Ad and Thamud and Fir'aun and others throughout the chapters of the Qur'an. And this is just a reminder to bring to the attention of Muhammad Wasallam, because Allah had detailed that in different places of the Qur'an previous to this surah, right? So it's don't you remember what happened? Didn't we detail to you the type of punishment we gave or we sent down upon Ad? So again, it's a reassurance to the believers who are being oppressed, right? Because Ad was, was just an amazingly uh, oppressive tribe. Uh, they were, they were uh, from the Arabs uh, and the books of Tafsir say, some of the books of Tafsir say, they were four generations after uh, Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu uh, And Allah Azza wa Jal sent to them Prophet Hud uh, alayhi salatu wassalam. Iram adhati al-imad. With Iram, 
who had lofty pillars supporting their tents or uh, buildings. Again, the word Iram, التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد, the likes of who had never been created in the land. Now, the word Iram, uh, the scholars differed in the interpretation of Iram, what is it referring to? And the predominant opinion is that uh, Iram is uh, the tribe of Ad. So Allah Azza wa is continuing to describe the, the, the people of uh, Ad. What did these people, what did these people do? I mean, why were they considered tyrants? Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَقَالُوا مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَةٍ As for Ad, they were tyrants on the land without due right. And they said, who has more power than us? They were, Allah Azza wa Jal gave them all means of power and strength. They were strong in bodies, their, their physical appearance, they were huge people, strong people, very powerful. And they were large in number, they had a lot of weapons, they were advanced uh, in, in uh, because Allah Azza wa mentioned that they used to build and all that. So they were advanced in that, in, in, in construction and all that. Uh, and they thought they reached that high level of construction and ability and power and control and number and, to the point that they thought they will never vanish. As a tribe, this, this tribe will never end. It will never vanish. So Allah Azza wa Jal, when they said that, and they insisted on belying Hud alayhi salatu wasalam and oppressing his people, Allah Azza wa Jal sent upon them a very painful punishment. Allah Azza wa Jal sent a, a strong wind for seven nights and eight days. And despite their physical strength, the, the narration said that the wind used to blow one of them so high in the sky and make him land flat on his head to make his head splash into pieces. And then Allah describes them after the wind hit them he said, كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْلٍ مُنْقَعٍ As if they were trunks of palm trees uprooted. They were upside down, landing on their faces on, and their, uh, their heads. And uh, their plants dried out as if it never flourished before. وَثَمُودَ الَّذِينَ جَابُوا الصَّخْرَ بِالْوَادِ This is another example. And with Allah Azza wa Jal said, did you not consider what Allah did with Ad and what Allah did with Thamud, who curved their homes into the rocks in the valley? Again, Thamud is an Arabic or an Arab tribe. Allah Azza wa Jal sent to them Prophet Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, and they refused to believe. And Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed them. They were living uh, at the northern part of uh, the Arabic uh, peninsula between Al Medina and the uh, Levant. Now, again, they had caravans going to that side, the Meccans, that is, and they would pass by their uh, areas, right? Uh, their areas are uh, known until now by the village or the villages of Salih, referring to uh, Prophet Salih alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah Azza wa Jal is describing the strength of the people of Thamud. They were so powerful and strong physically that they used to engrave huge rocks and make homes out of these. They used to take huge rocks from the mountain into the valley and make homes inside that. Can you imagine the physical strength they possessed? And then Allah Azza wa Jal 
as a result of their rejection and, the, and denial and belying of, who, of Salih alayhi salatu was salam, Allah azza wa jal uh, destroyed them. وَفِرْعَوْنَ ذِي الْأَوْتَادِ And with Pharaoh, the owner of the stakes. Now, the story of Pharaoh is one of the most famous uh, and frequently mentioned in the Quran. Now, this last verse, this last uh, word, the, the word al-awtad uh, has different uh, interpretations. Uh, the al-awtad, the owner of, now the stakes here referring to, some interpretation said, to the number of followers, soldiers who were supporting him and making his kingdom firm. Right? As stakes do when you pin them down, to hold something like a tent or something. Uh, other interpretations said it's actually referring to the pyramids that look like them. Now a third interpretation of uh, these poles or stakes is that they used to punish people by pinning down two poles or stakes in the ground and tie uh, each leg of the person they wanted to punish to each one of these two poles and then roll a huge rock on them to uh, kill them and punish them. All of whom oppressed within the land and increased therein the corruption. Now, all of whom is referring to Ad, Thamud, and Fir'aun, right? And some scholars said it could be referring only to Fir'aun. Nonetheless, it is referring to either all or part of the uh, tyrants and oppressors. Now, Tagaw, oppressed. Oppression results in nothing but Fasad, corruption, as Allah Azza wa said. It corrupts the person who is oppressing because it makes him a slave of his own uh, desires, right? And it corrupts the oppressed, right? By ruining their life and making some weak-hearted people deviate from their faith. And it also corrupts the community in total and corrupts life and make li makes life and people shift and drift from the path Allah Azza wa Jal set for them as a straight path. Uh, Fir'aun, for example, reached the maximum as a result of his oppression to others. He wasn't just following his desire, right? He claimed to be an Rabbukum al-A'la. So it can take a person, oppression can take a person way off without him realizing. But once he reaches that, it's very difficult to come back and to accept the truth and to abide by it. فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَوْقَعَذَا So your Lord, again, your Lord, O Muhammad, who punished these, who supported the oppressed, your Lord is going to support you. Yes, you and your followers are oppressed, are wronged, fewer in number than compared to Quraysh, right? Less in weaponry, in now everything. But your Lord, who had previously supported those who were in the same situation as yours, will support you. So your Lord poured upon them a scourge of punishment. Notice Allah Azza wa Jal used the, the word sabba, poured, indicate, indicating 
abundance, indicating it encompassing everything, all aspects. Allah Azza wa poured punishment, and it also indicates the the, the factor of of a surprise that it it wasn't expected, neither the time nor the extent of or level of punishment that uh, was sent down to them. Ad was, uh, as we said, Az was punished by the wind, uh, and Thamud with the Sayhadi, uh, that loud uh, scream, uh, and Fir'aun, the known story when he entered the water and Allah Azza wa Jal drowned him and his uh, followers, his army, and uh, kept him preserved in his body as a sign proven the ability of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal can delay an oppressor, whether it's in, in, in the sense of a person or a nation, an oppressing nation. But eventually, things will come to an end. The Prophet wasallam said, and this is in the book of Al-Bukhari, uh, Allah Azza wa made it an obligation upon him that never that something rises like these tyrants, except that Allah Azza wa brings them down. Again, this brings reassurance to the followers of Muhammad with the victory of Allah Azza wa and to anyone who is a follower of the truth. See, the Quran, though it was revealed during the time of Muhammad addressing a particular uh, set of people, whether it be in the kuffar or the believers, right? But it's a universal, it's a universal message that is not bounded by a time frame. So no one can say, oh, this was for the Muslims during Muhammad's time, sallallahu No, it's applicable in all times. And that's the beauty of the Quran. That's the beauty of, of, of Islam. It applies to any place and any time, right? So when one sees what is going on with the Muslims and how oppressed they are and how weak they are, and how divided they are, almost almost loses hope in victory. But such verses, such stories, keep hope alive and bright in the believer's heart. Inna rabbaka labil Indeed, your Lord. Again, you see. How many t t times the word Rabbaka, Rabbaka, Rabbaka? Again, all of that is a reassurance to Muhammad sallallahu and his followers. Indeed, your Lord is in observation. See, when they spread corruption by oppressing others, by wronging others, by transgressing the boundaries, the natural result is that Allah Azza wa had to purify the land from their evil and from their existence. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, your Lord, is in observation. He's observing everything. He's recording everything. He's not neglecting them. He's just delaying them. As the, uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Abu Musa radiallahu anhu, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal delays the oppressor. He gives him time, right? حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَهُ لَمْ يُفْلِتْهِ But when he takes him, when he seizes him, he does not let go. Meaning, when he punishes him, that's the end of him or them. Allah Azza wa describes the situation of these people in the Qur'an. حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَالزَّيَّنَةِ وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا Until when the earth has taken its adornment and is beautified and its people suppose that they have all the power 
and authority of disposal and capability over it. They utilized all means of power, strength, authority, right? And they became in control of everything. Does that, does that remind you with anything? Doesn't it remind you with the behavior of tyrants? Oppressing countries who possess huge powers, right? This is how they believe. They believe everything is un under our control. We are in control. We will do what we want with this land. We will do what we want with these people. We will do what we want with this country. X or Y country, right? Hatta idha akhadat al ardu zukhrufaha wa zayyanat wa dhanna ahluha annahum qadirun alayha. What happened? When they reached that level of arrogance and spreading mischief and corruption on earth, what happens? أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغنى بالأمس. Our command comes to it by day, by night or by day, and we make it as a harvest, as if it had not flourished yesterday, just yesterday. Have you ever seen, I'm sure you have, the result of tornadoes and, and hurricanes, right? Before and after? Have you ever seen cities before and after tornadoes or hurricanes or earthquakes or what have you? Just the night before, as a matter of fact, just an hour before, before and after, right? Allah is saying when, when these tyrants reach that level, of arrogance and corruption and oppression and think they cannot be seized. No one has more control and power than them. No, more have, no one has more authority than them. They are the power. Allah sends His command. And His command is not necessarily in the form of a Muslim army. No. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا None. Knows the soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal but him. Allah Azza wa Jal defeated the coalition who were against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of the trench, Al Ahzab, with the wind. They did not fight the battle. Allah said, Allah suffice the believers from heaven to fight. So ataha amruna, our command comes. The command, we need to be mindful that Allah Azza wa has many soldiers. Right? If we're sincere with Allah, if we're deserving, Allah will send. Allah will send His soldiers to support. Subhanallah, wallahi, akhi, wallahi brothers and sisters, these verses really really bring tranquility to the heart and peace. Really reassures, it truly reassures the heart. You know, when, when, when you feel that you have the ultimate power supporting you and backing you up, then you will not fear anyone. All you have to do is fulfill your part and that's it. That's it. One last thing I need to to mention here is that victory is not always in the form of A defeating B or B being defeated by a soldier from the soldiers of Allah. The ultimate victory a believer can have and maintaining firmness on his faith and belief in Allah until he meets Allah. This is the true victory. It's not always physical. The battle goes on for generations. You might start the battle and not see the results, but the results will be seen by your children or maybe grandchildren. So one thing that we need to make sure of is that we always remain steadfast on the truth.
regardless of the difficulties and the oppression. We ask Allah Azza wa to help us remain steadfast on His religion. Allahumma ameen, subhanakallahumma hamdika, shalwa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka, tubu'ik.